when I bought this in here, you could buy an acre of land in. Mm -hmm. 50 cents. <laughs> Money's changed too. Oh my, everything has done change. <laughs> the change that I've seen in this world. But I thank God for what I have done for people. This whatsoever a man or woman gave me, that's what I eat. Mm -hmm. If they treat me good, I take it. If they treat me bad, it was all right. Mm -hmm. I took it. Welcome back, friends. Here we find ourselves again on our connector through Floral City uh, and through the eastern side of Citrus County, the Withacuchi State Trail. This is, as we said, we're going to visit uh, some of the cemeteries that are on Withacuchi State Trail. They're also on the Florida Black Heritage Trail. This is a, a book that you can get. The Florida Black Heritage Trail has uh, a publication that they've put out that gives you all of the places, the names, uh, and information on all of the places in Florida that are on the Black Heritage Trail. This place right here that we're going to go to is actually on here, along with uh, Pleasant Grove Church here in Floral City. We're very, very honored to have these places here in Floral City that are on this trail. So we want to make sure that you know about them and you can go and see them. Um, any other information, you can also look up. You can get this sent to you, or I believe you can download it. So check that out. We're going to go, if you pan over here and you look, as you're coming down the trail, you can look off to the east side, and you'll see this little open space. It's got a few cemetery stones back in here some beautiful trees, and uh, this is the Williams section of the Floral City Community Cemetery. Um, we're gonna go down in there right now, and we're gonna take a look at some of the things, Miss Elida, that we had just spoken to. Her family's buried in here as well, so we're going to go in, and we're gonna check it out. So come along. This is so great over here. It's you walk in from the trail or even from the other side and honestly, even if you look at it, uh, it's hard to tell that it's even here. You go by on the trail, you really have to pay attention to see these gravestones back in here. But once you walk back in here, it's peaceful, it's quiet, it's beautiful. There's a spirit here that I have to say, even if I hadn't seen these gravestones, over in this area here, um, there's something about a character in the trees. It's just, it's peaceful here. It's like you can feel um, the history. You can feel the souls um, that are still here and protect it. So uh, this is a great place. Over here is where Miss Elida Langley we just spoke to. This would be her grandparents, uh, Andrew W. and Elida Williams. They were some of the first settlers here in the 1900s that came with the phosphate. Um, her husband is buried over here, Clarence Langley. He was a wonderful man, uh, a wonderful husband to Miss Elida and a father and just a, a great Christian man in general. So if you get a chance, um, if you're on the trail or you just want an afternoon of peace and quiet to kind of come in and talk to these people and you just, you, you wouldn't understand that you have to experience it. It is just so incredible out here. Um, I want to take you over here for a second, if you want to follow me. And uh, you know I'm a tree person. That's what I do. I tell people I bleed trees. They just seem to have a spirit and they talk to me. And uh, this one really did. I called this one, I mentioned earlier in the show, that I called this one the guardian tree. You really kind of have to walk all the way around it to get an idea of the scope of it, and it has its own personality. I also took a picture of this when I was here because it just kind of looked like a face and it's just a little different. It's just, you can tell by the, you can tell by the moss that's on it the different colors of lichen. Uh, it's just a very, very old tree, and it's seen a lot. And uh, it is, in my humble opinion, that it is here to guard the souls that rest in this beautiful place. Here we are in the other section of the Floral City Community Cemetery. If you're looking it up online, um, for any of you history and gene uh, genealogy buffs out there, 
It is also, it's listed under Find a Grave as Williams Cemetery and also as Fraser Cemetery. But the correct name of this cemetery is now called the Floral City Community Cemetery. The land here was um, given as a cemetery by Mr. Fraser when his son passed away. He is buried right here. And this was the first grave uh, that was here in the cemetery. I believe it was 1908 is when this young man passed away. In 1908, when young Mr. Fraser died, his father donated this land as an African-American cemetery and a place where they could be buried. It served that for a lot of years through the phosphate industries and all that, the railroads. This uh, was a place that was left in Floral City for the African-American people to be buried and so that they would have a place always to go. It, I believe it was in the 1960s, Ed and Doris Bryant, lived right over here across Tower Avenue. They owned this property and they donated it to Citrus County and to Floral City and it is now the Floral City Community Cemetery and has been known henceforth since that, uh, by that name. Miss Elida Langley, I believe, is the contact person for any of these cemeteries. And um, now it is a community cemetery and it serves the entire community. Anybody who wants to be laid to rest here can do so. So uh, it's a beautiful place. There's so many people here that when you're walking through, if, after you go through the histories, that you just recognize and pick out the Ducats, the Vickers, the Nortons. There's just so many people here. So, and uh, it was all started by this gentleman right here. So I have to say, just like most of the cemeteries, his father definitely picked out a beautiful place for him to spend eternity. Another personality that resided here in Floral City and still resides right here in the cemetery was a huge personality. His name was Reverend Boston Vickers and he had quite a few kids that still remain in this area. He was an ordained minister and his parish was the Pleasant Hill Baptist Church, which is the one that's on the Florida Black Heritage Trail. It, it, he's had so many accolades and, and been, have bestowed upon him from Citrus County, from Floral City. He was just a man that was larger than life. And uh, I can honestly tell you, he wasn't given those accolades just because of who he might have been or the color of his skin. It was because he was an amazing human being that really did everything he could. And he was the epitome of a character that was a community builder. And it carries through with his children and the people that are still here. We're so grateful for people like Reverend Vickers. He came, he stayed, he conquered, and he is still here to leave his spirit. And we are so grateful for people like him. So he's right here in the front. Stop and say hello. Through the show, you've been hearing clips and seeing clips of an interview that was done with one of the African-American residents here in Floral City. He was actually Mr. Arthur Norton, and he was at one time the oldest living resident in Citrus County. He lived what you're seeing now through here are these clippings of when he was 106 years old. Quite spry for his age, I have to say. He also lived to be 109. He had a sister who at the same time was 117 years old. He was born in 1878. He was come from Tallahassee, Florida. He was the son of a slave, a former slave. He moved here in the 1920s or 1900s um, when he was about 20 years old to work in the phosphate mines. He stayed, he raised children, he raised families, and he raised the entire community. The one thing that he will say in these videos that I noticed was, God has blessed me with the things I have done for other people. And he wasn't kidding. He gave of himself, he barely had anything, but his character was worth millions. And the people in this community are very grateful for Mr. Arthur Norton. From the bottom of my heart, I, would, I am so humble and grateful that Elida Langley allowed me to come in, sit down with her today, and hear some of the stories and let her impart some of her history on me. This is stuff that's going to be lost, like I said, and I'm really, really grateful that she thought enough of me as a person and as a historian to allow me to share her story. That just is so amazing to me, and it's very valuable to those of us who love history. I want to say thank you very much to WYKE for always working so hard to get us on the air. I want to thank, of course, our Floral City family in Inverness, Mr. Nick Nicholas and his Nick Nicholas Ford in Inverness and Crystal River. They're so gracious to continue to help our efforts with this show, and we are forever in their debt. So I want to thank you for coming out to Floral City, listening to me, watching me, being interested in our history. Because friends, if we don't get interested in about this stuff, it's going to be gone. And this is history that deserves to be told 
This is our heritage, and these are our roots, and these are people that have given us what we have today. This is Floral City, friends. This is the real old Florida.